Equinox Observations, Flat Earth and Globe Earth, Part 4, Path of the Sun. A lot of the content in this video is copied from my other Path of the Sun video from the Flat Earth Experiments series. In this video is Part 4 of our six video series. In this, we'll simply make a shadow stick sundial and record the shadows. Preparation and Tools, Making the Shadow Stick Sundial. It's pretty simple. You could take a piece of cardboard, such as the, the lid of a pizza box, some toothpicks and maybe some clay to keep it stable. And the vertical piece that you're going to stick in the pizza box is called the gnomon. This is what is going to be uh, causing the shadows. Or you could simply stick a finishing nail on a piece of plywood sticking out so that it will cast a shadow. Whatever you do, make sure that the base of your shadow stick sundial is perfectly level and make sure that it won't be disturbed for the entire day. Making careful observations. Essentially, you're going to mark it once per hour, every hour, from sunrise to sunset. So to mark one shadow, just mark a dot with a pencil or pen, and it's probably best to put the, the time actually next to the mark. This will help in your later analysis if you want to see if there's a pattern of, of the times. And here's an interesting uh, tidbit. The zenith is going to be the closest mark to the gnomon. And this is was pointed out by uh, Robin Poe in her video, Sticks and Stones, Finding Solar Noon, where she had a shadow stick and she was marking the shadows with, uh, with pebbles. So let's do an analysis to determine if our pattern of shadows supports the globe earth model or if it supports the flat earth model. Remember, on the equinox, on the globe earth model, there's a, a uh, essentially no tilt to the earth's axis. Whereas on the Flat Earth model, the sun is tracing a path right above the equator. The analysis in this video is a little bit more complicated than other videos, so we're going to break it down four ways. In Flat Earth and Globe Earth, we're going to do a first a geometric analysis, and then we're going to actually model it with a little miniature model. So let's start with a geometric analysis of the Flat Earth shadow stick sundial. So again, on the flat Earth, the sun is tracing a path in a plane parallel to the plane of the, the Earth. So we know from geometry that parallel lines make proportional shapes. Well, the same thing works with parallel planes. Parallel planes also make proportional shapes. And so if you have a little gnomon and you use the tip of the gnomon as your common uh, sort of a pivot point, whatever path the sun takes in the sky will be mirrored exactly on your uh, shadow stick sundial base. The analogy is that of a pinhole camera. Remember, in a pinhole camera, there's no lens. There's just a little tiny hole. So light can only travel uh, through it one way, um, little lines of light. So whatever, whatever path the sun takes in the sky, it's going to be recorded on the film. In this, in this case, we don't have film. We have the base of our shadow stick sundial. So our predicted pattern of shadows is essentially going to be a semicircle, mirroring the path the sun takes in the sky above the flat Earth. Now let's take a look at a miniature model and see if our geometric analysis, our geometric prediction, stacks up. So I'm going to use a Gleason's map. So the disclaimer is the Gleason's map isn't necessarily the map. It's the most popular one, but it's not necessarily the one. And you are free to substitute any other map of your choosing. As long as you know the path of the sun on the equinox, you can substitute any other map. So here's my Gleason's map. And what I've done is I've uh, placed a card above, uh, right on top of North America with a little uh, piece of a toothpick and some clay. And I've marked out the equator. And what I'm doing is I'm using a little desk lamp and I'm having the bulb of the lamp. It's actually a little book light. I'm having the bulb perfectly trace the circle that is the equator. So I, first I'm going to mark a shadow and then I'm going to move the light. And I mark the shadow each time. And it turns out that I get a perfect semicircle of shadow marks, just as we predicted. Now let's turn our attention to the globe Earth. Again, we're going to start with a geometric analysis. On the globe Earth model, the sun is 93 million miles away. So the sun does not really trace a, a path in the sky because the sun is moving. This is an illusion caused by the rotation of the Earth. So essentially, in one day, the sun's not really moving. The Earth is turning towards it. So the actual path of the sun is, is literally a perfect circle with the Earth at the center. 
This is a circle, not an oval. That's an important distinction. So here's a picture of the Earth, Sun, and Moon to scale. And if you really look at this uh, image, it turns out that the Earth, in the heliocentric model, the Earth is essentially a dot compared to the Sun. So it doesn't matter if you're at the North Pole, South Pole, Equator, or anywhere in between, you're essentially um, in a point in space. So that's important for our analysis. So here's a picture of what the path of the sun might take in the sky, several parts during the year, the middle line being the equinox. So the, the plane of the path of the sun is marked in yellow. And what's interesting is that on the equinox, being that the earth is essentially a dot, that means all locations on earth are at the center of the sun's circular motion. So in other words, the sun is tracing a circle in the sky, but every observer on earth is at the exact center of that circle. And this is, this is really tough to get your head around it, and I had a, a hard time understanding it myself. So here we're tracing the sun, and the sun's moving, and we're marking our shadows. So it turns out that since the sun is tracing a perfect circle, and since we're at the center of that circle, it turns out that the shadows are all in a straight line. And this is very counterintuitive, because we would, we would normally predict that it would be a curve. Well, most of the year, the path of the shadows is curved. But on the equinox, the path of the shadows is a straight line. Lastly, let's take a look at our miniature model uh, using our globe Earth, and we'll see if our prediction from geometry comes true. So again, we're going to have a desktop globe, and I'm placing a card above North America and with a little uh, toothpick and a piece of clay, and I'm marking a shadow. Now the globe is aligned so that the tilt of the of the globe's axis is sort of sideways to the lamp. So in, in other words, I'm simulating the equinox. There's effectively no tilt. So I moved the globe and I marked the shadows all day and it traced a straight line path of shadows, just as we predicted. So let's recap. On the flat earth model, the pattern of shadows will mirror the path of the sun in the sky. And again, this does not matter what map you use. Um, this will be true if the, if the Earth is flat, this will be true. On the globe Earth model, the pattern of shadows on the equinox will be a straight east-west line. So, you want to share your results? YouTube user Kara Diane has set up message boards, flatearthmath.boards.net. So you can share your location and your pattern of shadows. One of the best ways to do this is to take a picture. So our next, up, our next video will be hours of sunshine. And all you'll need there is the time of sunrise and sunset. Please remember to be kind whenever possible because it is always possible. Thank you.